missing one. If anything, I would do. Um, I would maybe take some out of the magic spot. You know where the magic spot is. Uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> Hello Opophiles! I'm super excited to bring you this video today because we are talking about reed making and we're going to talk about reed making at sea level or low altitude versus high altitude or in the mountains. So here's what's going on. I'm taking a trip to Colorado to see about some schools and potential, you know, life path changes and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to try out some reeds here that I made at sea level and see what they sound like on the mountain and then make some reeds there and see what they sound like here. And obviously, I'll hopefully give you samples of everywhere, but I thought it'd be really cool to meet some reed makers who make reeds, you know, all the time in the mountains and see what they have to say. It's like a harmonic series. Uh -huh. Go down. So reed making is kind of an art and kind of a science. The more of the science you have taken care of, as in the skills and what to predict and how atmospheric changes can affect your reed making, the better off you'll be. So you want to know how your reed's going to work where you are, how your reed's going to work where you're going, and how to adjust or compensate how to make a reed work wherever you're going to be playing. But most importantly, you want to make sure that you smash that like button below and subscribe if you haven't already. Smash that like button! <laughs> okay, let's try out some reeds. Okay, so I got this reed that I made here a couple days ago, um, and I've got another one too we'll try out. And they really vibrate here. At sea level in Houston, where I'm at right now, the air is super thick and humid on the outside, and on the inside it's usually very air conditioned. So you get this like kind of, you know, dry, humid switch off every time you go outside. I feel like reeds vibrate pretty easily here. The issue with Houston reeds is that cane tends to grow back. So you always have to be refinishing the tip and finding where the cane has been compressed and is now sponging up to be thick again. So here's the reed in Houston. So I feel like the reed's pretty easy. I like the color of it. I like the response. It tongues very easily. I'm excited to see what happens in Colorado. Oh, let's try out one more reed, just to make sure that one wasn't just a fluke. You can definitely tell which reed is a couple days newer than the other one. But this one also feels pretty good. Let me check the response in the low register. This reed sounds a little different, but I really like it also. It's a little bit more sunshine in it. Uh, so I'm excited to see what happens. We're going to go to Colorado. I'm going to leave one of these reeds here just because I need to practice when I get back and I don't want to take any chances of reeds going back and forth to different ambience and not working when I get back home. So we'll take one of them to Colorado, leave the other one here to practice, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so first a quick wardrobe change because I just got done teaching at this elementary school concert. And a kiddo gave me this flower. It was adorable. Let's talk more about the reeds. So I've had a couple people give me advice about reeds uh, and how to prepare for the high altitude. And some people have said, you know, people that I trust, people who experience uh, playing in festivals like Aspen or going to Wyoming for, you know, playing opportunities, uh, to make some high altitude blanks. So I've got some blanks here that I tied. Now this one, it's got a C for Colorado. Uh, this, I've made them on 47 millimeter staples. Um, that's what I normally use. 
but the cane is a little bit narrower diameter, so maybe like 10 or even 9.5. And, and the point of that is to try to make the reed more open. Supposedly, reeds collapse as you go up the mountain. So we'll see what happens when we get there. Uh, hopefully I remember to talk about that. And I made a couple blanks that also have a C on it for Colorado. Uh, but they are the normal diameter that I normally use, so 10.5. Um, sometimes I do like to err on the narrower side, even in Houston, just to make the reeds a little bit more open, but 10.5 is kind of the company policy of what we're using. Okay, so another strategy that I heard was to make the reed almost to be finished, and that is what I did for one of the reeds, and we'll see how that goes when we get up there. Um, I'm pretty excited to try stuff out. Worst case scenario, I have pieces of cane that I'm taking, this isn't one of them, but like this, folded and shaped, and I'll just take it up there and make a reed from scratch if I need to. Uh, I think the important thing to remember when you're making reeds is you can't approach it from a place of fear. Confidence in your abilities is worth its weight in gold, almost as much as you smashing the like button below. Smash that like button! <laughs> Let's get going. Let's go to Colorado and see what's going on there. Hi. Hi! How are you? I'm doing good, it's how good are to you? See you? Nice to what see you. What school are we at? Um, University of Colorado Boulder. That's awesome. What is your name? Grace. Grace? Are you playing recital soon? Uh, I am. When is it? It is November 10th. Cool! It's gonna be in Gruson. What instrument do you play? Um, oboe. Oh, that's awesome. What room are we gonna be in? This is the reed room. Oh, so or the reed dungeon. The reed dungeon? <laughs> yeah, it depends on how you look at it. Cool. Uh, can you show me kind of how to tie a reed? Uh, yeah, sure. Awesome. Where are you from, Grace? I'm from Dallas, Texas. And how long have you been in school here? Um, this is my junior year, so third year. Is it weird to be making reeds at this altitude? Um, a little bit. There's a few uh. things that you have to do slightly differently. One of which is you have to look for smaller diameter cane. So that's always a, good, a fun challenge because, as we all know, sometimes you order a batch of cane and none of the pieces are the diameter that you ordered. So, <laughs> yeah, so the first thing I do when I'm tying is I make sure that um, I have pencil markings up at the end of the tube so I don't tie past the end of the tube. And then I take my handy dandy thread and start to pull it around the side. What's your favorite color of reed thread? Oh gosh, this is the first time I've ever done a multicolored reed thread, as you can tell on my... Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer black the very most, but Ooh, I'm right. told I'm boring and soulless and personalityless because of it, so... <laughs> I do that. Oh, just like compatriots. <laughs> I think my professor wouldn't mind, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So then I make sure that it's lined up and straight on the tube. And then I pull tight and start my crossover thread. Nice. What kind of cane do you buy? I buy a lot from Texas, actually, which is a new hotspot for thread, I think. Or for thread, cane. sorry, for cane. I'm distracted, obviously. <laughs> no, um, yeah, it's been, there's this, um, there's this guy down there whose name is Ed Spencer, and I purchase from him most of the time. But sometimes I get from RDG as well. Hashtag not a sponsor. Hashtag not a sponsor. <laughs> Although if he's watching this, <laughs> please sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then I do a couple knots and nice. take it off the end and do a specialty one that looks kind of wild. And then one more, and cut her loose. How long have you been making reads? Oh gosh, I started the summer before my freshman year, so not very long at all. Great. And there it is. Beautiful. Not the best color combination, but it is what it is. <laughs> so you scraped a little bit at the top, can you tell me about that? Yeah, so when I'm doing easel work, um, I just take the, I take a really um, dull knife mm -hmm. and I take away cane on both sides of where I'm going to draw the mark, and then I, when I fold, it ends up having like this striation. But before I let it dry, I'll take some off on like the back as well in the nice. tip so that it dries better. Awesome. Yeah. Are you making reads alone? <sighs> no, I'm not. It's actually my friend Curtis. What? Hey, so I'm Curtis. The other junior in the O studio. Yeah. Nice. Where are you from, Curtis? I'm from the St. Louis area. Nice. How long have you been making reads? I've been making reads I like on and off since middle school. But nice. I mean like I never made like a working read by that age. Until but, Yeah, it was more about just having the equipment since then and okay. I did a couple of summer things at the University of Illinois. Cool. So, what are you working on right now? 
I'm just working on scraping the back and heart of the reeds I'm currently working on. Can you see work. a little bit of it? What? Can we see a little bit of it? Yeah, sure. What it, is St. Louis at sea level? Yeah. How do you make reeds at this altitude compared to St. Louis? I think here I have to scrape a lot more. Just like Grace mentioned with the diameter, there's a big difference too. Um, so it's it's more of just scraping more to get reeds really vibrant and they don't last nearly as long. So that's, <laughs> yeah. we, we get really good at making reeds here because we have to make so many reeds just to play as much as one reed would play nice. you know, at sea level. What school is this again? University of Colorado Boulder. <laughs> We're uh, a little bit above sea level. Just just a little. <laughs> How much? A little. Uh, um, about a mile. <laughs> yeah. About a mile. Okay, so let's put on that. Backy back. Yep, and I like to do it at an angle because mm -hmm. um, if you go straight up and down, there's a chance you can get the rails off. Can you point to the angle you're talking about? Yeah, so I hold my knife on either side, kind of. Um, I can't describe the exact like degree, but I think it helps... Because you get just as much cane off, but you're doing it at an angle, so you're not taking off yeah. like, as opposed to going up and down. Cool. Um, Can you tell me a little bit about your knife? Yeah, sure thing. Um, Professor Cooper um, really supports like the furlough system. Mm -hmm. um, he recently changed his mind about how he sharpens his knife, so he's been using that. Um, so we use a jig that sets the angle of our knife, and basically you just put the knife into the jig, and it makes this little squealy noise but uh, as you pass along it sets the perfect angle so it's consistent every time mm -hmm. which is an issue other people that don't use the jig have where um, their knife angle their burr angle won't be the same right. every time it's inconsistent yeah because mm -hmm. there's a lot of human error that can go on and you use what kind of stone um i can't remember it, it comes with the kit oh, it itself. comes with it okay. yeah um so I, easy or, I think it's an easy lap probably okay. yeah we'll put a photo up of it yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. And uh, what kind of cane are you buying? I'm also using the Texas cane, and um, I also use the RDG cane. Um, one thing that's great about RDG, though, I haven't done this myself, but the person who picked out my cane for me went to the RDG store in Los Angeles, and that way you're able to pick out the exact tube that you need, the exact diameter, good cane quality. If you purchase online, it's just kind of a mixed bag. of You, you can have Quite some literally. bad pieces. Yeah, <laughs> literally a mixed bag. Um, awesome. It's not nearly as consistent, so. Uh, I'm just gonna walk around and ask you questions, okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. What is this machine up here? Oh, I have no idea. It's bassoon stuff. Yeah. I think this okay. is bassoon stuff up there and around the top okay. level. Is open stuff. Yeah, these, we these have These micrometers aren't yours? This room. What was that? These micrometers aren't yours? Oh, oh we those. use those, yeah. Okay. We use this one. It's a little bit better. <laughs> okay. And how religious are we about the micrometer? Oh, very. Yeah. Okay. It has to be 0. 0.7 to 0. 0.59 millimeters. Say again? It has to be 57 to 59 millimeters. Hundreds of a millimeter thick. Okay. When you gouge. Okay. Can you uh, be a little bit more descriptive for oh. us noobs? Us noobs? <laughs> yeah, so um, I use the RDG gouging machine, which is up there. Mm -hmm. And um, when I gouge, I make sure that I get to, or like we have the blade adjusted such that when you get to the very bottom and you feel like you're not taking off any more cane, it's 57 to 59 hundredths of a millimeter thick. And you want it to be uniform across all sides. So. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And then when you're scraping, you use the micrometer as well. Oh, no. No. I don't. He, Just oh, before. Yeah, our professor okay. actually doesn't believe in, like, measurements. He thinks that you should find a read where it's at. So okay. each piece of cane is unique, so you should treat it like that. So it kind of feels like you're stabbing in the dark a lot, but it can be yeah. nice. <laughs> and this is, like, an apple analogy. You'll never see two apples that look exactly the same. Same with, like, any other vegetable or natural thing, just like cane. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Do you guys want to plug your Instagrams real fast? Pull our Instagram out? Just plug your Instagram. Oh, plug oh. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna finish. I'm going to cut this out. We're going to finish. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So my Instagram is grace.obo. And mine is cjts obo. Um, I'm doing the 75 days of practice challenge right now, and I actually just uploaded something with the Halloween thread that I just tied a bunch of blanks with. Ooh, can we get close up with the Halloween thread with us? Yeah, sure thing. Yeah. So there's that. Oh, yeah. Hold still. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yep, so we got that, and then this is Haunted Forest, but it doubles as a Christmas thread. Who made this thread? Squirrely Stash, yeah. Squirrely Stash for your thread. Yes. Woo! Great company. Hey team, thanks a lot for visiting us at the CU Read Room, where we got to talk with awesome oval players who are making reads as we speak. 
Uh, just one more time. This is Grace and Curtis. Uh, I don't know. Subscribe, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I'm in Colorado now, and I brought the same read that I played in Houston to Colorado. We're going to see how it works. Okay, so it vibrates, you can play it, it doesn't vibrate as much, it takes a lot of like uh, to make it work, and I don't recommend it. Um, the low notes are okay, but they're not as easy, you gotta really force them to come out, which is not ideal. I really thought the read wasn't gonna work at all, so that works better than I thought, um, you know, and if I had to, had to, had to, I could maybe practice on this read, but I don't recommend playing on the read in real life in public. So I brought some blanks that I tied in Houston to Colorado to try to scrape at this elevation, but uh, they didn't really pan out. So I brought two pieces of cane, tied two reeds, scraped them yesterday. Just kind of want to show what's going on there. This one is a slightly larger, sorry, smaller diameter than 10 and a half, which I use in Houston. <laughs> So, works pretty much like a read that I would make back home. Uh, the only thing is, it's really dry here, so the read really dries up, kind of in my mouth. Um, that's the only thing. In Houston, things stay nice and moist a lot of the time. You don't have to really soak it that much. But here, you gotta really soak your reeds for a while. Uh, that one was made on a shorter staple, which might have helped. This one is on the same length staple, 47 millimeters. And, well, I'll let you hear it. Oh, the diameter is a little bit smaller even still than the 10.5 that I would make in Houston. smaller diameter of tube will produce a reed with a bigger opening initially. You can kind of close the reed down over time, it'll start to slip more, and putting in windows in the back, scraping out cane from the back, will definitely collapse the reed more and more as time goes on. And it can take a couple days, so that's the only adjustment kind of feel-wise that I felt on this reed, just because the diameter is quite a bit smaller than I'm used to. Uh... So, it is what it is. You gotta make reads wherever you go. Hopefully, the tips from the read room at the University of Colorado are helpful to you. And my own experience making reads is also what it is. If it is... Ready? One, two, three. Smash, Smash that, that like button! button. <laughs> <laughs> and subscribe and share the video with other read makers that you know. And I'm gonna take these to Houston in a little bit. And we'll see how they sound going from high altitude, 5,000 feet, like a mile, down to sea level, where the pressures are greater, and Houston, of all places, where the humidity is like a million times more than here. All right, see you there. All right, hey guys, I'm back from Colorado now. So traveling is always exciting. The thing that I kind of haven't figured out yet about traveling is you need to leave your spaces neat before you leave so that when you come back it's like really nice to come back to the space uh hopefully on the next one i'll be a little bit more organized it's just things are a little bit crazy right now with uh kind of a lot going on so so i'm going to stick these reeds in the water to soak and we'll try them out in just a moment uh colorado is beautiful you guys like i don't know if there's a prettier place on the planet that I've been. It's just incredible. I was there when it was really sunny and then it snowed really hard while I was there so I got to see both uh, temperature fluctuations in the fall there. 
so that was really exciting. The read making was a trip. Um, I was really frustrated the first day, but I think the trick in hindsight is to be patient. Um, really cool time checking out the read room at the University of Colorado Boulder, and hopefully you guys already saw that clip if I've edited this correctly. And now I'm ready to try the reads from Colorado in Houston at sea level. So we made these reads, two reads, in Colorado, and you know, at least two read makers so that they liked them, they thought they were pretty good reads. Great. <laughs> yeah, I really like this read. I don't think there's anything really that wrong with it, honestly. Keep on. What? Oh, yeah. Cooper, who's a professor there, didn't play on this read, but he said it sounded pretty good, so I was, uh, you know, pleased with that, but he didn't, he didn't play, so I don't actually know if he would have liked it or not. Um, honestly, I kind of doubt it, but, uh, you know, he said it was a good, uh, good read for Never Had Made Reads at that altitude before. Okay, so first thing I'm noticing is they're really closed. Uh, they seem to have lost a lot of their spring. Uh, but that could just be because they haven't soaked up all the way yet. Uh, oh, this one's much more open. Okay, so this one's much more open. And the other thing I'm noticing is, you know, I scraped them over two days. Uh, which I think if I were to go back and plan a little bit better, I would leave more time to make a read. Two days was okay. The first day, I didn't feel like I could get anything, so I was really frustrated. Um, I did have a plan before I left. So a lot of people gave me advice before I left, and that was to finish some blanks almost to the finished stage of the read, and then finish it when you get up there. I did not think that worked at all. I tried bringing reads of my normal diameter, and then even a little bit more closed diameter. Um, I could not get these blanks to turn into reads, and that was really frustrating. So I kind of broke down and just tied these two new reads. I had two pieces of cane. One of them was a little bit narrow diameter, and the other one was normal diameter. And that might explain the opening uh, differences but I felt like that worked a lot better. So my advice, personal advice, is when you're going up to altitude to just start over, just make a read, and maybe that's just the Eastman way of making a read really quick and not having to you know, go through a 10 day process, but that worked the best for me. I don't know if that's gonna work for you. If you go in between high and low altitude a lot, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Darker sound if you take out of the magic spot. <laughs> and it looks like my tip's even a little thicker, but I don't think that is necessary. I think that's just what this piece of cake needed. I but... just do like the shape too. Right? Yeah. What shape are you using? Oh, I use um, Mac 5. The, uh, the reeds. All right, so let's try it out. Okay, so that cry is a lot more satisfying. Okay, first thing I'm noticing. It seems really, like, loose. The reed doesn't really want to hold together very well at all. Uh, that's interesting. Let's check the response to the low register. Okay, so the response is okay. It, again, the opening for this one is kind of collapsed, um, and I'm not really sure why. I also tied this one on 46 millimeter tubes. Some people said that would help bring the pitch up for the mountains. I'm not sure if that was really necessary because I made this other one on 47 millimeters. So we'll see what that one does. But I felt like, you know, both of them kept their pitch pretty well. I think as long as you're being really uh, sensitive to the read as you're making it, I'm not sure it makes that much of a difference. Maybe one of them is easier for making a lot of reads. Let's try the other one. Yeah, so a similar thing. This one, it seems really loose. Uh, it seems a little over scraped, to be honest. Um, so maybe you end up scraping more at the high altitudes. And I think some of the Boulder students were saying the same thing. Um, the low register feels pretty good still. So I guess functional read's gonna work. It seems just kind of flabby. Um, so that's kind of what 
Colorado Reeds do when they come back to Houston? Let me know what you think below also in the comments. Um, I really appreciate you guys supporting this channel. It's been a lot of fun. This is definitely one of the more planning and editing heavy videos I've done in a long time. So I'm really excited to see what turns out. I hope that it's useful for you. And if it is, always remember, when in doubt, play beautifully.